Good afternoon, and thanks for joining today. My name is Eli Jacks, and I'm the chief of our forecast services division here at National Weather Service headquarters. I also serve as the lead for the hazard simplification project. The goal for this project is to simplify and clarify our hazard messages for the public and also for our partners. Key to this work is to examine our watch warning and advisory, or WAWA system, and also the products we issue within the system. I'll be providing a lot of information today, so you may want to review it again at your own pace later on. So we've placed a version on the Commerce Learning Center so you can do that. We also welcome you to contact us at our project email address with any questions and to review our project website where you will find additional reference materials. The URL for the website and our email address are shown here. Here's what you'll learn during today's session. First, I'll review the issues with the current Wawa system and the motivation to explore possible change. Next, I'll provide a summary of a number of social science engagements we've held over the past few years. After that, I'll review which of our winter products will become legacy this winter via our product consolidation. By the end of the session, you'll be able to identify the part of the Wawa message the new GHG formatter will automatically populate and also to understand how your grid values will affect the language in the first phrase of the reformatted messages. You'll get to understand how the new HasSIM format can support partners via machine-readable common alerting protocol. And finally, I'll discuss how the changes this coming winter could link to a possible larger change later on. So why HasSIM in the first place? I'm now showing excerpts from service assessments dating back to 2012 that answer this question. We now have 124 Wawa products with the addition of the new storm surge watch and warning products this hurricane season. The sheer number of these products raises the expectation that our partners and the public understand the distinction among them all. It also raises the potential for associated confusion. Another issue is that even though we have 124 products, we still sometimes don't necessarily have the right product to describe the impacts you may expect. For example, as the 2012 derecho raced from the Midwest to the East Coast, forecasters that impacted WFOs only had the severe thunderstorm warning and special weather statement products in their toolbox. However, we've received feedback during our social science engagements that these tools were not enough to highlight that this one was different. On the right side of this next slide is a periodic table depiction of the 124 products that are now in place, including the new storm surge watch and warning. My thanks to Andrew and Sorge, now our forecaster at our Des Moines forecast office for creating this chart. On the left side of the slide is a depiction of the potential confusion raised by the Wawa system itself. I've coined the term orthogonal logic to underscore that we use these terms to simultaneously express expectations of impact and certainty. The thing is, some users may interpret the three terms to be hierarchical with respect to each other. That's the orthogonal part. Also, the three terms themselves are not necessarily intuitively understood by all users. So with these factors in mind, we began investigating what might be possible back in 2012. In 2014, we integrated social science expertise, and we did so in a big way. This slide shows the variety of focus groups, surveys, and other engagements we've held. As you might infer, we have now gathered a great deal of data. The feedback has ranged from suggestions for new language within the Wawa system, to ideas for alternatives to the Wawa terms themselves. We've worked with emergency managers to test possible prototypes in our hazardous weather test bed. We've interviewed partners across a wide spectrum, including school superintendents, insurance companies, and even the Nuclear Regulatory Commission to gather information on how embedded our Wawa terms are within policy and law. You can find most of these reports on our HazSimp website under the Reference Materials tab. Here are the recurring themes our social science efforts have uncovered. First, some understand the Wawa system and its product, others don't. There's a spectrum of understanding. Also, the Wawa terms are institutionalized within our partner's policies to varying degrees, so we would need to provide significant advance notice 
if we decided to change any of the Wawa headline terms. Also, per the third bullet here, there is support to examine possible alternatives to the Wawa terms, particularly advisory and possibly watch. But the one common recommendation across many of these efforts, and that's what's important here today, is that we should reduce the number of our Wawa products and reformat and shorten our messages for clarity. This is the standout recommendation that social science has provided up to this point, and so that's exactly what we're planning to do with our winter products this coming season, starting in October. First, let's discuss the upcoming changes to our message formats this coming winter. These changes will apply to all watches, warnings, and advisories for winter precipitation and wind chill. We know our users prefer bulleted formats, so we will keep that approach, but we'll take it a step further by using a nationally consistent what, where, and when format. This format will enable you to place the hazard and the impacts right up front, followed by information on location and timing. Also, we will reduce the number of or consolidate our winter Wawa products. These charts depict the changes. First, you'll no longer use blizzard watches or lake effect snow watches. Instead, you'll issue a winter storm watch for all cases where you believe significant winter weather is possible at the watch level. However, the critical information regarding hazard and impact will still be retained in the what section of the reformatted message. Similarly, you'll no longer issue freezing rain advisories or lake effect snow advisories. Instead, you'll issue just one winter weather advisory. As a note, we are not consolidating any wind products, including wind chill at this time, but we will examine how we can apply the consolidation and reformatting concept to these products over the next year. We're also going to take a look at products for other hazard areas as well. There will be one more change this coming winter, and this change will apply to Great Lakes WFOs in central region only. WFOs Duluth, Green Bay, Milwaukee, Chicago, Grand Rapids, Marquette, North Central Lower Michigan, Detroit, and Northern Indiana will also not issue lake effect snow warnings. Forecasters at these offices will issue winter storm warnings instead. All other WFOs will retain the lake effect snow warning as an individual product. The SNP from the survey feedback on the right side of this slide shows that respondents supported this proposal by nearly two to one, which our social scientists identified as a significant finding. Note that we are not consolidating the blizzard warning, ice storm warning, or wind chill warning this coming winter you will still be able to issue these products as you deem necessary. Now let me show you some examples of how today's products will be transformed in the new consolidated and reformatted system. The red text you see here is provided for emphasis only in these examples. Here's an actual freezing rain advisory product from the archives. As you know, the attribution line repeats the headline product, and in this case, the format begins with locations followed by a number of other relevant parameters. Now here's the new message as it would be created in the new format. The message is now headlined as a winter weather advisory. However, the what section of the message contains the key hazard information, which is freezing rain expected. Note that the forecast for temperatures to rise above freezing during the day is also included in the what section, as this is key impact information. Also, the attribution phrase is removed, allowing us to shorten the message further. Of course, the WFO attribution is still indicated within the header information at the very top of the message. It's not shown here due to space limitations. A few more important things. First, the legacy product I showed you on the last slide and this new message contains exactly the same information. It's just presented differently. Second, the GHG formatter that will be provided to all WFOs will populate the first phrase in the what section of the message for you based on either what is already in your grids or via a simple process you'll use within the template. So in this case, freezing rain expected would be automatically created. Finally, again important, you will retain control of the text within the message. Aside from this first standardized phrase, the message will be yours to create and even the standard phrase will be editable for specific needs as you deem them necessary. I'll explain this all in an upcoming slide. 
As another example, here's an example of today's Blizzard Watch. I'd like to point out one interesting item as noted by one of our social scientists. You can see that until the very last sentence where the meaning of a Blizzard Watch is defined and the word potential is used, the message actually reads identically to a warning. In particular, the word will is used in the timing and impact bullets. For those users who aren't clear on the difference between a watch and a warning, this could very well be an issue. This type of insight is one of the benefits social science brings to the table for us. In any event, the new messaging format should serve to clear this up as shown on the next slide. Here's the reformatted and consolidated version of the message. It's now a winter storm watch rather than a blizzard watch, and all of the information is in the new what, where, and when format. Also take note that the standard phrase for blizzard watch will be blizzard conditions possible. Finally, the word will is not used in the message, highlighting that this is a watch, not a warning. Again, none of the information has been omitted. It's all there. I'll have many more specific examples coming up to review hypothetical, complex situations you may run into. Now, here are some of the negative comments we received from our survey feedback. These comments are understandable, given that some familiar products are being consolidated. Some talking points for responding to these comments are also shown here, and a more detailed version of these points are contained within the WCM toolkit, which you may wish to review. The link to this toolkit, along with other resources, is provided on the last slide. As a summary, consider first that the new approach eliminates potential confusion surrounding the cancellation and reissuance of messages. For example, if in the past you issued a freezing rain advisory, but conditions changed so it would now qualify as a winter weather advisory, all you would need to do in the future is to update the what section of the message. No need to cancel and reissue here. Also, emergency managers have told our social scientists that by the time they see the Wawa headline, they have already been well briefed. They're more interested in that point at the specifics of the what section of the message. Also consider times when you may have been faced with the possibility of blizzard conditions, but are uncertain as to whether blizzard criteria will be met. The new use of the winter storm watch within the first phrase, blizzard conditions possible, could enable you to get out the critical high impact information as soon as you feel it's warranted without needing to decide on specific product-based and meteorological criteria. This goes to the heart of our Weather Ready Nation goals namely to focus on the what, namely the impact of the message and not the hazard headline. Now, let's shift to what this means for you in operations. With thanks to formatter experts Andy Just of La Crosse, Jonathan Lamb of Charleston, South Carolina, and the entire Eastern Region Text Formatter team, we will provide you with a new GFE formatter that will enable the changes to our winter products on October 1st. These changes, along with changes to the flood product suite, will be baselined in AWIP's build 17.3.1 during late winter and early spring 2018. As part of the new formatter configuration, the options to issue legacy winter weather products will be removed from the GFE make hazard procedure. The formatter provides the new what, where, and when template for you to complete, along with the standard phrasing I've been discussing. This new formatter will enable you to automatically convey specific hazard expectations within the what section of the reformatted message. For most hazard types, the formatter will automatically generate the proper wording. However, in a few specific instances, you will need to provide this information when creating your hazard grids. Here's how. First, if you wish for blizzard language to be included within the what phrase of a winter storm watch, Enter a segment number between 100 and 199 when creating the hazard grid. This will generate language as blizzard conditions possible. To generate lake effect snow wording, enter a number between 200 and 299 in the segment number box. Back to blizzard for a moment. If you're in an office that issues elevation-based hazards, you are likely utilizing the segment number to define the elevation for the hazard. In this case, if you're issuing a winter storm watch for blizzard conditions above or below a certain elevation, you'll need to manually type in blizzard conditions possible in the what bullet. 
For precipitation types other than blizzard or lake effect snow, the hazard type in the what will be automatically populated based on the values in your precipitation accumulation grids. Details are shown on this slide. For example, if you issue a winter weather advisory for at least half an inch of snow in your grids, the phrase snow expected will be generated. If at least a hundredth of an inch of freezing rain is in the grids in addition to the half inch of snow, the phrase mixed precipitation expected will be generated. The phrasing for blowing snow and wind chill information will be generated by your weather and apparent temperature grids respectively as also shown here. What I really want to stress is that you retain flexibility as to what appears in the what headline. All we ask is that you end your phrase with either expected for advisory and warnings and possible for watches, followed by a period in both cases. This in case our partners wish to parse on these phrases for their needs. To further underscore that you do have the latitude to be flexible within your what headlines, take a look at this excerpt from a hypothetical winter storm watch at La Crosse. And you can be sure it's hypothetical because it was created for purposes of example on June 29th. This is for a mixed precipitation case where neither the snowfall nor the ice accumulation amounts meets warning criteria. But the combination of the two, plus the fact that this might be an early or late season event, could warrant watch or warning headlines. The formatter generates the phrase heavy mixed precipitation because the word heavy is included in all winter storm watches. But note that in cases like these, you may delete the word heavy because the precipitation will only be light to moderate. Now, here's how you'll create a winter storm watch for the possibility of blizzard conditions. First, let's take a look at a few example forecast grids. Note that the formatter will analyze much more than only the hazard grids. For blizzard situations, snow amount and wind gust grids are also very important. Apparent temperature is analyzed as well in the event that wind chills come into play. Let's now go through the process of making a hazard through running the formatter. Open up the Make Hazard GUI under the Hazards menu and select Winter Storm Watch for your hazard. Then, as discussed earlier, select any number between 100 and 199 and enter it into the segment box. In this case, we've selected 100. Now here's how the selection will be depicted in the temporary hazard grid. Go ahead and merge the hazards, and you'll see where the hazard grid shows the winter storm watch with segment number 100. After that, go to the formatter launcher from your products menu and always select the HazSimp formatter as shown here. As a backup, just in case the primary fails, Andy and the Eastern Region formatter team have created a bare bones backup formatter that will still populate the new HazSimp format for manual entry. Now running the formatter, you'll see your winter storm watch has been created. Here's what you'll see if you use the backup formatter. Again, manual entry will be required in this case. Here's another innovation that won't impact your forecast process, but could be of benefit to our partners. You may have heard of Common Alerting Protocol, or CAP. CAP is a capability that enables machine-to-machine -machine communication of information in formats that alerting authorities can define. The National Weather Service is an alerting authority, so we have already assigned levels of urgency, severity, and certainty, or USC, to each of our Wawa messages. However, this approach is actually backwards from how CAP is intended to be used. The way CAP's intended to be used is to define USC and any other desired parameters up front. In fact, our impact-based warning approach actually does use CAP properly by enabling forecasters to assign one of two values for both certainty and impact to our tornado warnings. In the case of IBW, these values do appear in the message, but more importantly, they appear invisibly within the encoded CAP wrapper. I'm mentioning CAP in conjunction with our winter simplification because starting on November 6th, with the rollout of an update to CAP version 1.2, 
we'll be able to define new parameters within our messages. So for example, if a partner has an app that distinguishes between snow and freezing rain areas, we could define a new hazard parameter that would eliminate the need for partners to parse for phrases in the new what section of our message. We've been working with CAP experts Mike Gerber and Matt Davis to explore ways to define a hazard parameter in this way. No decision has been made on going in this direction yet, pending public comment collection. But since CAP will be an important new capability within Hazard Services, which is their future replacement software for WarnGen, GHG, and RiverPro, the HASIM consolidation could serve as a pathfinder activity in this regard. To close out the CAP discussion, we're asking you to use the new phrasing within the What section as indicated in the updated version of 10513. And thanks to Dave Siroka and Andy Knoll of our Winter Weather Program here at headquarters for leading the effort to update this directive. Most important is to ensure the first sentence of your what bullet ends with either the word possible or expected with a period at the end of the first phrase. Thanks in advance for your help with this. Okay, now it's time for some specific examples to try and cover any case you may encounter in the real world. Now thanks go to Greg Shore, our severe program leader for generating these examples. This first case is fairly straightforward showing how a legacy lake effect snow advisory will appear as a winter weather advisory. Key points here are that the first phrase in the what section says lake effect snow expected with a period at the end of the first phrase. Please do not join other information such as heavy at times or accumulation amounts to the first phrase. We're aiming to keep the first phrase short and to the point. Note that Greg elected to include the heavy at times in his second sentence of the reformatted message. This next example is a bit more complex. In this case, different impacts are forecast for two adjoining zones within a single CWA. In the legacy system, we'd have a freezing rain advisory alongside a winter weather advisory in two separate segments, both contained within a single WSW. In the new approach, both segments are winter weather advisories with different language specified within the what section. I'll pause here for a moment so you can review the comparison. Now even more complexity in this next example. In this case, we have two segments as on the last slide within one WSW, but now both segments need to be upgraded. In the past, we'd have four separate products in play, but in the HasSim model, we only have two, with both segments of the winter weather advisory being upgraded to a winter storm warning. In all cases on the right side, appropriate language is specified in the what section of the messages. Again, these slides are already available on the Commerce Learning Center, so you can review these comparisons at your own pace. Here's another upgrade example. In this case, instead of upgrading from a blizzard watch to a blizzard warning, we upgrade from a winter storm watch to a blizzard warning. Note how in this case we migrate smoothly in the what section from blizzard conditions possible to blizzard conditions expected. What's important here is we'll now be encouraging our users to examine the what section of the message rather than asking them to interpret the headline changes. Yes, the headlines do change in both cases, but we're now shifting the focus. There's much more flexibility to include important information in this new what format than there is within the headline itself. Here's the final example, this time a downgrade with hazard differences expressed via segments as in the previous examples. Note how instead of needing to downgrade four products, we only need to downgrade two, the details of what's expected are contained in the what section of the message. I encourage you to take a look at this on the CLC website. Here's a wrap up for this section on operational changes. First, the new GHG formatter is going to be made available to your WFO for loading locally. The new template and the backup version will be placed on the software collaboration portal where installation and configuration instructions will also be located. 
These instructions will include a process for how you can test the new formatter without disrupting the current formatter. Your region will provide the link to all of these materials once they are available, which should be by the beginning of September. The link will also provide instructions on how to modify the Make Hazard Config Utility to disable the products that will become legacy as of October 1st. As a review, the template will automatically provide the new what, where, and when format, and you will specify content of the first phrase in the what section for lake effect snow and blizzard hazards via the segment box. Your precipitation and apparent temperature grids will provide the needed information for all other hazards. Also, you'll still have flexibility within the new template to message as you see fit. We just ask that you ensure your first phrase ends with possible or expected, followed by a period in each case, so we can support partner parsing. Finally, I presented a number of case studies intended to be as comprehensive as possible. However, we do welcome you to contact us with questions or ideas for cases we may not have thought of. I'll provide our contact information on the final slide. Now I'd like to place these initial changes in context of some possible larger changes later. First, as shown on the extreme left of this slide in small black text, we plan to consolidate and reformat our flood product suite late this coming winter and early next spring, and we'll be providing separate training on that. We're also working on options for other hazards, including a marine consolidation that could be implemented next summer, followed by non-precipitating products such as wind, heat, and cold. We even plan to take a look at how we might improve messaging for tropical and severe products. All of these options will be tested for public comment. In addition, we'll also examine a level of understanding of our Wawa terms and test alternative language to the terms themselves across all demographics via what we're calling a generalizable survey. We'll be executing the survey this year with social science support. If we find there is support for some of the alternatives, we could then assemble what we're calling an all-star prototype and test it against the Wawa system. So lots of exciting steps ahead, and we'll keep you posted on these project elements. Along these lines, here are some examples of the type of language we could test in a generalizable survey. Note that we plan to consider testing terms that include color and other hierarchical language for comment. Our social scientists have been working hard on designing these prototypes for the generalizable survey based on all the feedback we've received to date. I'd point out that the last example here could be used in the case of a derecho, such as the one that I described earlier. Here's the overall wrap-up. The winter changes I described today will be implemented in October, and we'll be back in touch through your regions on how to install the formatter. As I just described, we'll be moving forward with the flood product changes by next spring and then continuing to examine options for consolidating and reformatting other hazards from there. And finally, we'll be continuing to look forward to explore options that could replace the terms watch and advisory over the next few years. With that, thank you for your attention today. This project has certainly engaged a village of willing volunteers. I've mentioned a few of them explicitly during this presentation, but I want to acknowledge as many as I can here in this slide and including our social science team that's contributed so much. Please feel free to write us at the email address shown here with any comments or questions. On the next slide, you'll find a list of resources you can refer to, including the HASIM website and WCM toolkit. Also, a recorded version of this presentation is available at the Commerce Learning Center and on the website. Thank you again for your attention.